there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft. Thank you so much for joining me today for another one of my videos. And if you're new to my channel, then welcome. It's lovely to have you here. I love to talk about all things sewing related with a bit of knitting sprinkled in too. So in my video today, I'm going to share nine patterns that I'd like to sew in 2022. And I'm going to sew them as part of an initiative on Instagram, which is the Make Nine Challenge. The Make Nine Challenge on Instagram, you might have heard about it before. It's a personal challenge anyone can join in with. It's always under the hashtag for that, hashtag for that year. So the hashtag this year is um, Make Nine 2022. And you basically, at the beginning of the year, pick nine patterns you would like to sew. They can be sewing patterns or they can be knitting patterns, or whatever you want, really. But nine items you'd like to make in the year. And then as you go through the year, you can kind of update your progress. And I guess it's just a way of giving you a bit of a plan for your year. And I really like joining in. I've joined in, I think this might be my third year joining in. I really enjoy it because firstly, I do like to have a list and a plan and I like ticking things off. But also I find it helps to stretch me a little bit in my sewing and try new things. So in previous years, last year, I tried my first um, fully lined coat. And then I've also um, done jeans as part of the Make Nine Challenge and swimwear. And I quite like stretching myself and learning new skills. So the Make Nine definitely helps me think about that. So I'm really looking forward to sharing my nine patterns that I've got planned for 2022. It's a bit of a mix um, and I'm really looking forward to getting started on them. But before I start sharing those nine patterns, I thought I'd also share what I'm wearing today. So today I've got a quite a quite casual outfit on. Um, I'm wearing a pair of ready to wear jeans and I've got a handmade top and the top I made using this pattern here. It is the Agnes top pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. It's a really nice, simple fitted jersey top pattern. It's one of Tilly's patterns for beginners. And I always find Tilly and the Buttons instructions really nice and clear. And this pattern is no exception. But yeah, it's designed for jersey fabrics, maybe like a cotton jersey or a viscose jersey. I'll show you the line drawings. It's quite a fitted jersey top. I think it's got negative ease built in and it's got a scoop neck and you can either make it as a sort of simple top or you can add ruching to the front or also to the sleeves. So a couple of little options there. For my version, I actually hacked it slightly to change the neckline. So I um, made it into a boat neckline. And to do that, I borrowed a neckline from another pattern, which is a free pattern, which is the Mandy Boat Tea by Tasuti Fabrics. And I'll link that pattern down below in case you fancy checking it out. It's free to download on Tasuti's website. And I really like the finish of the boat neckline. You kind of twin needle stitch it and it comes together really nicely. And I like how it looks on the fitted Agnes top. And I made my Agnes top in a cotton jersey. I think it was a Minerva organic cotton jersey. It's really lovely and soft to wear. Um, I think it was the emerald green colour, which I really like actually. And I'll link that fabric down below, like I will any fabrics and also patterns I talk about in this video. But yeah, it's a really pretty green colour. I originally made it last month to go as part of an elf outfit when I had to dress up at Christmas for a party. Um, but I wanted to make something I would wear afterwards too. And I really enjoy wearing this as a casual top too. And I do like the colour. So I'm glad I made it. In terms of sizing on the Agnes top, it's not got the biggest size range ever. It goes from a UK 6 to a UK 20. And the largest size is for a bust of 44 inches. And I usually make the size 2 for Tilly and the Buttons patterns. Um, my measurements are bust 32, waist 26, hip 36, and that's pretty much a size two. The hips are an inch smaller on the pattern, but I think because it's stretchy fabric, it's absolutely fine. So I'll put a picture up of me wearing it. It's a really nice, casual, relaxed top to wear. And I quite like, I think I made a few of these in pattern fabrics, and this is my first plain one, and I quite like it in a plain fabric too. But that's what I'm wearing today. And now I'll move on to talking about the nine patterns I've chosen to make this year. Oh, and before I start talking about all my plans for 2022, I thought I'd mention that in December, I released a video where I talked all about all of the garments I had made as part of my Make Nine 2021 plans. And I made all of the patterns I planned to make. I even made a couple of versions of a couple of them. And I'll put a link to that vlog above and also in the um, video description below in case you fancy checking that out and seeing how I got on with my last year's plans. So the first pattern on my list for my Make Nine 2022 is one I've had actually for a while and I've even had the fabric for this one for a while. It must be at least 18 months, which is quite a long time for me because I usually like to get fabrics in, make a decision on them and get them sewn up. But I have been holding off on this one because I've been holding off on making a few decisions about it. So I thought putting it on my Make Nine 2022 list will encourage me to get it sewn up so I can actually sew it, enjoy sewing it and enjoy wearing it too. And the pattern is this one here. 
It's Izzy Kelly Anorak by Closet Core Patterns. It's a really nice classic style anorak. I'll show you the line drawings. It's quite a straight fit anorak, but you can add a um, drawstring waist casing to bring it in. And it's either got a stand up collar or a three piece hood. And it's got gusseted flat pockets, I think they um, are called, so a bit of an interesting pocket detail. And it's got a zipper placket with a um, flap with um, snaps on top. So it's got a really classic anorak. And um, I've got nothing like this in my wardrobe. I'm kind of anticipating I'll make it and it'll be one of these things that's perfect for transitional weather and I can kind of wear over anything. So I think it'll be one that'll be really useful to get sewn up. And in terms of fabrics, they recommend um, sort of medium weight fabrics like twill um, or denim or linen, or I think you can also use waterproof fabric and turn it into a proper rain mac. In terms of sizing, a lot of closet core patterns do come in two size ranges. So they take you up to size 30, but this one only comes in their smaller size range. So it goes from a size zero to a size 20, and the largest size is for a bust of 46 inches. So it's not one of their largest sized patterns. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to giving it a go. I think I'd like to make the version with the drawstring waist casing and probably with the hood. But I'm not sure about what to do in terms of lining. I have bought the lining add-on for this pattern too. I just need to make a decision on what to do and whether to go for a lightweight lining like a cotton lawn um, or to go for a thicker lining like a fleecy fabric and make it a bit more cosy. And I just need to make a decision really or maybe make uh, maybe order a few swatches and have a think about how they would go with my fabric. But I'll show you the fabric I've got for this um, anorak. I've got this really lovely cotton twill fabric. It's a Robert Kaufman cotton twill. That I got ages and ages ago from Semi Sunshine in this navy blue colour. If I hold it up close, you'll be able to see the twill um, on it. So it's got a bit of structure to it, but it's not super duper heavyweight. I think it'll be perfect for a kind of transitional weather anorak. But yeah, I just need to decide on the lining and I think I need to just get started on it, you know, um, start tracing the pattern pieces. And once I get immersed in the process, I'm hoping it'll all become clear as to what I should do. I've even got, I've got a whole folder of things ready for this um, project. I've even got some um, twirl fabric in here too, because I'm definitely going to make a twirl of this to check the fit. So I've just got some um, medium weight calico to use. And in here, I've even got lots of the um, hardware you need for it. I've got the, um, the jacket snaps and I've got... Um, even a couple of these little cord stops for my elastic, um, not my elastic, my um, drawstring waist. So I've really got everything I need, I think. I just need to start getting going on that one. So that is definitely a project I'd like to try um, while the cold weather is here. So I might get a chance to wear it for spring. So that is my first um, plan on my list, the Kelly Anorak by Closet Core Patterns. I think it'll be quite a meaty project and I'm looking forward to getting stuck into that one. So the second pattern I would like to sew as part of my Make 9 2022 sewing plans is a dressing gown pattern. This year I'd really like to make myself a lightweight summer dressing gown as I don't have one in my wardrobe and last summer I really found I missed having one. And the pattern I've chosen to make this dressing gown is this one here. It is the Hayley Robe by Tammy Handmade. And it's my first pattern I'll try by Tammy Handmade. She also has a few really pretty looking dress patterns out. But I decided to go for Hayley robe, as I understand from other people, it doesn't come up too oversized and I wanted quite a neat fit for a summer dressing gown. So I'll show you the line drawings. It's quite a classic dressing gown shape. Here they are. It's got a dropped shoulder, it's got a collar band, a tie waist and you can add patch pockets and you can make it in a shorter length or a longer length. And it's designed to be made in a whole range of fabrics. You can make it in anything from like a lightweight viscose up to a sort of snuggly fleece fabric, depending on what you want. But I'm going to go for some lightweight fabric for my lightweight summer dressing gown. In terms of sizing, the sizing goes from a UK 6 to a UK 24 and the largest size is for bust 49 inches and waist 42 inches. I'm between size on this pattern, I'm between a 6 and an 8 but I'm going to go for the size 6 because I do not want it to come up too oversized, I want it to be, like I said, a fairly neat fit. And I've got the fabric for this one already which you might have seen already if you watched my vlogmas videos or my new year fabric haul. I bought a really lovely cotton lawn fabric from Fabric Godmother. It's a bit out there for me, it's a bit more bold than the usual print I would go for, but I thought it'd be really fun for a dressing gown. And here it is, and I've actually already cut this one out. This is my current project I'm making, so these are the leftover bits. Um, but here it is. It's a cotton lawn called Tiger Mountain, and it's one of Fabric Godmother's own prints. I think it's a vintage print from the archives. Um, but yeah, it's got a really cool teal colour and orange, and I like that colour combination. It's got these large-scale tigers on, it's got some stars. I just thought it was a lot of fun and would make a really nice dressing gown. And the fabric itself is really lovely, actually. It's a really lovely silky cotton lawn, so I think it'll make a lovely lightweight dressing gown. 
So yeah, I'm in the process of sewing this one, so I'm looking forward to sharing it with you soon. But yeah, I think it'll make a really fun dressing gown. And I'll share more details once it's finished. So the next pattern on my Make 9 2022 plans list is a bit of a different one for me because it is a Big Four pattern company pattern. And I think when I started sewing, I used a few of the Big Four patterns and then I got stuck into indie sewing patterns and I never really looked back. I really like how they sort of hold your hand through the sewing process and I like the feel of them. And I think I've got really comfortable sewing the indie patterns, so I haven't tried many more Big Four patterns since I got into them. But I thought this year, like I said with Make 9, I do like to stretch myself and try new things. So I thought I'd give a Big Four pattern a go and see how I got on and see how it kind of compares. And the pattern I've chosen is this one here. It is the new look um, N6682. It's a really pretty dress pattern for woven fabrics and I thought it had some really nice details and would be a fun one to try. So it's got this pleated collar detail on this dress here. That's the kind of version I like, I think. And it's got two different sleeve options, this sort of um, loose sleeve with a gathered cuff or just a sort of loose short sleeve. And it's sort of gathered into a sort of fairly cinched waist and it's got this sort of flared skirt and it's got an invisible zip at the back. So it's got some interesting details to try and I'm really looking forward to giving it a go. Um, it's designed to be made in lightweight woven fabrics. It's got a really limited size range, that's the only thing about this pattern. And um, it goes from a UK 6 to a UK 18 and the largest size is for a bust 40 inches, waist 32 inches and hips 42 inches. And I had a look on the pattern to see how I would compare with the measurements. And my measurements would put me as a bust size 10 and a waist and hip size 12. So it's quite different to what I'm used to for the indie pattern companies. But I'm going to give it a go. And what I plan to do for this one is make a toile of it to see how the fitting and sizing goes. And I've got some fabric to make a toile. I just bought some plain black viscose fabric from Minerva. I bought plenty of it and I thought, well, if it turns out okay, it might end up being an actual wearable toile. Um, but if it doesn't, it, the fabric wasn't too um, expensive, so it would just be good to give it a try. So I'm really looking forward to trying it out. I'm a bit nervous actually, because I'm so used to indie patterns and I know the instructions on these patterns can be quite different. But I've got more sewing experience under my belt now than since I last tried one of these patterns. So I'm hoping it'll be fine. Um, so yeah, I will let you know how I get on with this one. But I think it's such a pretty dress it'll be a nice one to have in the wardrobe particularly maybe for wearing out to dinner or something like that so yeah looking forward to giving that one a try the next pattern i would like to make in 2022 is a pattern i've been admiring for a while and i've seen lots of beautiful versions on other people so i thought it was finally time to get it and give it a go and it's a woven blouse pattern and it's this one here it's the bloomsbury blouse by nina lee london it's a really pretty blouse pattern with some interesting details. I think it's described as Edwardian inspired. It's got this high necked collar with a ruffle at the top. It's got a yoke and then a ruffle that goes all the way around to the back. And I think you can make the ruffle in two different widths. So either a sort of, sort of more subtle one or a slightly more overstated one. And it's got a bracelet sleeve with a little ruffle at the bottom. And at the back, it's got a button down back. So yeah, some really lovely details, this pattern. It's designed for lightweight woven fabrics. And I was quite keen to get the pattern sooner rather than later because I really wanted the paper version. Nina Lee, I think, is discontinuing her paper patterns going forward. So you'll only be able to buy them going forward in PDF format. But I think her paper envelopes are so beautiful. Each of her patterns is named after an area in London. And Bloomsbury is an area that's associated with um, academia and also um, literary institutions. So on the pattern envelope, she's illustrated with books and little sort of um, quills and ink pots, which I think is really pretty. And all her other patterns are similar. They're all the designs all based on the area in London. So, yeah, I was really keen to get my hands on the paper pattern because it'll be one I'll enjoy looking at for a long time to come. But I'm really looking forward to giving this pattern a go. Um, in terms of sizing, it's not got the biggest size range. Nina Lee has released quite a few of her patterns in two size ranges, but this one's only available in the smaller size range at the moment. So it goes from UK 6 to UK 20, and the largest size is for bust 46 inches, waist 38 inches, and hips 47.5 inches. But I'm really looking forward to giving this one a go. I haven't got any fabric yet for this one, so I'm going to be on the lookout. But I think I'll probably go for something quite drapey, like a viscose. And I just think it'll be a really fun, pretty make to try. So that is, yeah, my next plan, the Bloomsbury Blouse by Nina Lee London. The next pattern on my list to sew this year is one that comes from a sewing book that I've had for a couple of years now. I think I got it actually two Christmases ago. And I've not ever made anything from this book, which I thought was a real shame. So I thought I'd sit down this Christmas period and have a look through the book. I really enjoyed having a look through it and little reads and look at the patterns and choose one I'd like to make because it's a really lovely book and it seems a shame to be sitting there and not being used. 
And this is the book here. It is the Breaking the Pattern book by Named Clothing. It's got some really lovely patterns inside it. And I actually got this book for Christmas two years ago. And I also got the Stretch book by Tilly and the Buttons then. And I've used that book loads. So I felt a bit bad for this book. So I had a look through and there are a few options that I thought might make nice ones to try. The first one was a knit dress pattern, which is this one here, the Ruska knit dress. And it's got this sort of little knot at the front. It's quite a casual, relaxed jersey dress. And I really like the look of that one. I'd like to give it a go at some point, but it's not the one on my list for 2022. I also really like the look of a very dressy dress in this book, which is the Selena dress. It's a really pretty dress with these sort of bow at the front and bows on the wrist and this sort of princess seam and high neck. And I really love the look of that one, but I thought it was probably a bit dressy and something I wouldn't necessarily wear a great deal. So eventually I decided on this dress here to put on my Make Nine which is the Sarast shirt dress. So it's a really nice shirt dress designed for sort of light to medium weight woven fabrics. And it's got some really pretty detail. It's got a little ruffle on the collar. I think you hopefully you can just about see that. It's got this interesting sort of feature of sort of gathered skirt, but then flat fronted bit too with the buttons down the front. So I thought it was a bit different and I do really like wearing a shirt dress. So I thought it'd be a really nice first one to try from this book. In terms of sizing, the sizing for this book goes from UK 6 to UK 22 and the largest size is bust 46, waist 40 and hips 49. And I've only ever made one other named clothing pattern, which is the Kayla wrap dress. And I really enjoyed that pattern. I enjoy wearing my Kayla wrap dress a lot. So I'm really looking forward to giving the Saras shirt dress a go. Yeah, I just think it's a pretty one. It's a bit different to average shirt dress with some interesting features. And I haven't got a fabric picked out for this one yet. I think I'll go for some sort of cotton fabric, maybe a cotton lawn maybe, but um, I'll enjoy choosing. So that one probably will be on my list a little bit later when it comes towards summer and that'll probably be when I wanted to wear it. So I'm really looking forward to giving a pattern from this book a go finally. The next pattern on my Make Nine 2022 list is a pattern by French Navy. And French Navy is a sewing pattern company that I really like. I really like their aesthetic. I think their designs are really cool and simple and quite timeless and really easy and relaxed to wear too. And I've made three of their patterns already. I've made their free Celan Tee, which is just available to download for free on their website, which is really nice. I've also made their Forsyth dress and their Fleetwood dress, and I get loads of wear out of both those garments. So when I was looking at my Make Nine 2022 and making some plans, I thought I'd have a look on the French Navy website and see if there are any other patterns of theirs that I fancied making. And I found one that I really want to give a go. And it is their Stair Tee. And I put up a line drawing of this one because I haven't bought it yet. But it's a knit t-shirt pattern and it's got quite a boxy shape and it's got a dropped shoulder and you can either make it with a long sleeve or a short sleeve with a little cuff. And I do like a little turned up cuff. And it's got a split level hem. But yeah, it's got quite a boxy, relaxed shape and I thought it'd be perfect for wearing in summer. It's designed to be made in light to medium weight knit fabrics, although it says you shouldn't choose something too drapey. So probably I would go for a cotton jersey or something like that when I start looking for fabric. I haven't got any fabric for this one yet. In terms of sizing, the sizing range goes from A to an H and the largest size is bust 43, waist 39, hips 45. So it's not the biggest size range ever, but looking at the finished garment measurements, it does come up quite oversized. So there's quite a lot of room in there. So yeah, I think it'll be hopefully a perfect relaxed t-shirt to pop on with jeans or a pair of shorts for summer. And I think it'll be quite hopefully quite a simple make and I'm looking forward to giving that one a try. So yeah, when it comes towards summer, I'll start getting on the lookout for some fabric for that one. The next pattern I would like to sew this year is a pattern by Fibre Mood. And I've never sewn a Fibre Mood pattern before, so I'm really looking forward to giving one of their patterns a go. I think when I started sewing and joined Instagram, I was a bit confused by Fibre Mood. I kept seeing them pop up, but I couldn't work out how their patterns worked. And then eventually I figured out that instead of releasing individual patterns, they release patterns by magazine. And the pattern I really like comes from their issue 16, so one of their quite recent issues. And it is their Amin blouse. And I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like. It's a really beautiful blouse pattern. I think it's described as a romantic style blouse. It's got a round neck and a button placket. And the, the really pretty feature is this sort of triangular yoke with gathering. And when I saw it come out, I really loved it. But at the time I was making another blouse pattern and I thought I probably don't need another blouse pattern. But I've kept coming back to this pattern and I've spent a while looking on the Instagram hashtag and admiring other people's versions. So I thought I'm going to put it on my Make Nine 2022 list and hopefully it's a pattern I'll really enjoy sewing and wearing too. So yeah, it comes as part of the issue 16 and I had a look on the fold line and you can buy the pattern individually, just the Ermine blouse, or you can buy the whole issue. And I think I'm going to buy the whole issue because the pattern on its own individually costs £8, I think. 
But if you buy the whole magazine, it only costs £15.50 and you get 12 patterns as part of that. So I only need to make one other pattern and it'll already work out better value. But I'll put a picture up so you can see all the different patterns you get. There's a whole range in there, including a couple of children's patterns too. And I particularly like the look of the Irma body warmer. I think that looks really nice and something I might like to sew. So there's definitely at least one other thing there that I might sew. And because it's an ebook, you don't have to print out anything you don't want. So it won't be wasting any paper. I'll just print out garments as I plan to sew them. But I'm really looking forward to giving the Ermine pattern a go. It's designed for lightweight woven fabrics. I haven't got a particular fabric in mind. It's one I'm going to keep an eye out and see what grabs me. So I'm really looking forward to that one. And in terms of sizing, they have a great size range on the fibre mood patterns. They go from a size extra small, which is a UK 6, up to a size extra, extra, extra large, which is approximately a size 28 slash 30, which is for bust 57 and a half inches, waist 53 inches and hips 57 inches. So I really like the fact that Make 9 makes me think about trying different pattern companies and different patterns. And I'm really looking forward to giving the Ermine blouse a go. The next pattern on my Make 9 2022 list, this is actually the penultimate pattern, is a knitting pattern. And I always like to include one knitting pattern as part of my Make 9 plans, just because I really enjoy knitting as well as sewing. And I like to have a knitting plan and something new for me to try on that front too. And this year, the pattern I've selected is a pattern by Wool and the Gang, and you get it as one of their kits. And I always really enjoy getting one of their kits. I love how it comes in a paper bag with everything you need, and you can just start knitting. And it's quite relaxing and fun too. And I've asked for this one for my birthday, so fingers crossed I will get it for my birthday. And it is their Coco Sailor Sweater pattern. And I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like. It's quite a relaxed, oversized style sweater with drop shoulders and a sort of boat neck. And you knit it up in stripes, and I'm quite looking forward to that because... I've done quite a lot of colour work and mixing yarns when I've been making like toys for my children and other little knitted items. But all the garments I've made myself so far have been one colour, so I'm looking forward to having a knitted garment with different colours in. And it's knitted up in their shiny happy cotton yarn, which I really like. I've knitted with it once before. I made their saltwater sweater kit. And it's really lovely yarn. It's really nice to knit with. It's got some drape to it, but it's quite substantial too. Yeah, it's really nice to knit with. And this one is knitted up on quite large needles. I think eight millimetres, so it should have quite a loose weave, so it should be quite a nice sweater for sort of summery, warmer months. And it should knit up quite quickly as well. And it's all knitted in stocking stitch and rib stitch. So hopefully it should be quite a straightforward, relaxed knit that I can do in front of the TV and not have to think too much about. But I'm really looking forward to getting this kit. I hope I do get it. I've chosen the colours already, so once it has arrived, I will show you them. And I'm finishing a knitting project that I started last year at the moment, but hopefully I'll finish that off and then I can move on to my Coco Sailor sweater next and start my, yeah, start working on that knitting plan for this year. So that brings me to the final spot on my Make 9 2022 plans list. And that spot is reserved for a big question mark. Um, so this question mark represents a new pattern release that will be released in 2022. And I always like to keep one spot for a new pattern release, just because firstly, it adds a little bit of mystery to my list, which I quite like. And secondly, I do like to try something new and current, and I think including that um, option on there encourages me to do that. So I'm really looking forward to keeping an eye out for patterns that are going to be released this year and seeing what might take my fancy. I think last year the spot ended up being taken by the Davenport dress by Friday Pattern Co. And that wasn't released until towards the summer of 2021. So it was quite a long time there where I was having a look for new pattern releases and nothing had quite taken my fancy. So it'll be interesting to see for 2022 how soon it is before a new pattern comes along that fills that spot and what it ends up being. So yeah, I look forward to keeping an eye out on new pattern releases. So that brings me to the end of my list and I'll put up a summary so you can see all of my plans. As you can see, there's quite a mix there and I'm really looking forward to getting started on them and giving them a try. I'd love to know if you are going, getting involved with the Make Line Challenge this year too. And if so, if there's a particular garment you're particularly looking forward to sewing. And like I mentioned towards the beginning of the video, I did do a Make 9 2021 um, summary of the makes I made video, and I'll link that down below in case you fancy checking that one out too. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, I would love it if you give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love it if you'd consider subscribing for more sewing chat going forward. I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into these makes, and you'll see them popping up through the year in my makes videos. So yeah, I'm looking forward to choosing some fabrics and getting started on them. So thank you so much for watching again. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Bye.